Lisa Stansfield, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hi. Um, so, ten years after the last album, you're about to release Seven. Why is the time right now? Um, I just thought that it wasn't right before and it, and it just feels right. It, it's just sort of like, I always think it's like, the, you know, a, a cycle of, of music and a cycle of life, almost, of trends. And um, you've just got to wait for the world to like move round, and then you just jump, jump on board, <laughs> and, and um, hope for the best, really. Yeah, yeah. So, can dance does that sort of point us in the right direction as to what we can expect on the album? How yeah, you... I, think, I think you know we we've sort of revisited what we've done like earlier, in like earlier in my career in. Um, I think there's a lot more soul, there's a lot, there's a lot more um, R&B, jazz, soul sort of thing in there than, than there was before, yeah. Yeah, you wrote it with your husband, Ian Devaney. Um, was that a smooth writing process? Do you, uh... um, yeah, it usually, I mean it usually is, but it, we, we've literally taken a long, long time to do this album. Right, writing wise we have. Um, recording wise we, we, we did it in about four or five weeks something okay. like that um, apart from like little bits and bobs that we did earlier in New York and stuff um, but yeah it, we've written an awful lot of songs and an awful lot of ideas songs so some of them are half songs some of them are ideas some of them are full songs but we wrote, we probably wrote about 60 odd songs Jeez. for this. And uh, so it, it took quite a long time to whittle it all down and set, because you, you always have a soft spot for everything yeah, that yeah. you do. And it's like, oh, but that's really good. No, but that's really good. And it's like, oh, come on then, let's like, it's sort of like flip a coin and see, and see which one. But um, I suppose when you flip the coin, you know which one it is anyway, don't you? Mm. But, you know, double album? Well, consider? I think, we, yeah, we, we're already thinking about the next album, the next project, because we touch wood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if this goes really well, because if something does go really well, then you haven't got a lot of time to do the next project because you're constantly travelling and constantly doing promotion. So we, we, we want to do as much as we possibly can um, before hopefully all that starts. Yeah. <laughs> and in the album, I mean, so is it just a collection of songs or is there some sort of message that, that you're imparting? Um, it's, sort of, it's sort of a story about one woman who, you know, she finds love and, and it doesn't it doesn't work out the way she wanted it to work out and um, and it's all about her journey her emotional journey throughout that and then em eventually finding love again and, and learning to learning to love and learning to trust again as well yeah. um, you've been touring a lot this year sort of around Europe and that is it always as enjoyable as, uh, as it ever was? Is it become a different I'm, experience? I'm enjoying time? it loads more. I enjoy it loads more than, than I used to do. Um, because I, th I think now that that I've, I'm a bit more mature and, and, and I've seen a lot of things and I've had a, I've had a big step away from it and have been allowed to be sort of a good... I, I think it sounds weird, but like a normal person, you know. Um, I, I think it, I, I've gained an incredible amount of confidence, not singing-wise, but just in, in the other aspects of my life. Just And um, standing on a stage now, I used to be really frightened to talk to the audience. And now really? I, I, I don't really... It um, doesn't bother me. I just <laughs> I just have a laugh, to be quite honest. Do you still get the goosebumps in your stomach before yeah, you go on? Yeah, of course, but I hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd be, I suppose, that It's good for you, I yeah. think it is good for you, yeah. 
But um, what's been, across your whole career, what's been your most musically productive period, do you think? Um, I'll tell you something, I think it's been this album um, and the run-up towards this album and really taking stock of everything and and really, really, really writing. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a gorgeous um, transition. You've enjoyed it, you know. There's yeah, not been any really, sort of real stress points. No, across I really the, have. I really have. Yeah. That's always very good. Um, but you've worked with countless DJs, artists. Who'd be on your your wish list to sort of collaboration wise? God, you know, everyone project. asks me this yeah. all the time, and you get, it's like, what's your favourite colour or whatever. Huh? Um, God, there are a lot of people that I'd love to work with, but it's, you know, with me, I, I always, and I, I never sort of think about things like that. It's always what's suggested to me, and then if it's a good suggestion, then it is, and if it isn't, then it isn't, you know. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't, doesn't come to be. Um, but since making your acting debut in Swing 1999, you've uh, mustered up quite a few acting credits and uh, starring in a new film, Northern Soul, with Steve Coogan, Ricky Tomlinson. Yeah. What's what's that all about? It, and, and how did um, it come about? Well, it's it's the story of a, a, a young guy who is a bit of a wallflower and he's a, like a schoolboy. He's, he's in the last year of school and... Um, and he's, he's a bit of a wallflower and he hangs out with his granddad all the time and he makes her fix models. And his mum gets really, really worried about him and I play his mum. And, um, and she encourages him to go to the youth club. And she says, why don't you go to that youth club like your cousin? <laughs> no. and, um, and so he goes and he gets involved with like the weirdest things, like he gets involved with drugs like northern soul music he gets addicted to speed all sorts of things and it's like his mum is so uptight and she wants him to be this like worldly wise fella and and, and she sort of sees the demise of it all and and she's sort of thinking oh shit that was my fault <laughs> <laughs> but a really enjoyable project though isn't it? yeah it, it? And it, it really is and ricky tomlinson played my dad which was you know, quite a tall order to to boss Ricky Tomlinson around. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And Coogan, funny, won the comedy. I never the met. Other I night. never met no. Steve Coogan oh. um, on this project, but I've seen felt that like scenes that he's he's actually in, and he's hilarious. He it seems to be on the top of his hilarious. game at the moment, so it's mm. definitely a good time to uh, well, have to be in the same film as him anyway. Any other acting projects that you can tell us about in the program? Um, no, I just I just sort of wait until the phone rings and and then see what see what's in the offing really. I, t I say no to more things than I say yes to, which I do musically anyway. Mm. I'm, I'm a bit like that. That's why you never hardly see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you seem to have done a lot of filming stuff in the last sort of ten years. Obviously, it's yeah, just music I've, I've done a bit quite a bit, but I really enjoy it. But I. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to add a second string to my bow and it be, and it end up being a chore. Yeah, you know, yeah, Because yeah. my music's never been like that. Um, and I think people can tell when, when you're not at one with something, you know, because I, I hate cheating people. It's not nice because people aren't stupid. Yeah, you know? no, no, definitely. You've got to mm. be 100% on oh, soul, I suppose. Um, but yeah, who, who have been your musical inspirations, even, even film-wise actually? What, what, who did you look up to in, in the film um, sense? Oh, well I'm into like a lot of indie film and um, I don't know, I mean, I mean musically the list is completely endless, isn't it? Like, the, you know a lot of the Motown people like Otis, like Otis Redding, Marvin Gaye Chaka Khan, Prince, you know, I just started off listening to Diana Ross, um, Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight, um, there, there was so many people. Yeah. Anybody, it, uh, who's impressing you at this present time? Music? Um, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent out there now, 
there's an awful lot of talent. I think, you know, there's um, John Newman, who I didn't know about recently, I got into. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, Adele is just incredible. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's just loads of stuff out there now that, that is very refreshing and, and, it's, and it's there out on its own and it's not being controlled. These people aren't being controlled by anything. They're doing it themselves, and it's and it's really gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, throughout your your career yourself, you must have seen a lot of changes in in the music industry. How, mm. what sort of state is it in now? How healthy do you think the, the industry is right now? I think it's getting more healthy now, because I think I think I think corporate music, um, basically, shut itself. You know, when all this internet thing yeah, yeah. came into the fore. And um, and it's to be embraced, it's not to be repelled. And um, I think it's it's a massive threat to, to corporate business because corporate business, a lot of the time, doesn't think like that. Um, and, it, and it's something to be, like, not to be afraid of at all because even though people are like um, stealing music, they've always stolen music. People will always steal films, they'll always steal music. It's just like, it'll even itself out. It's all fine to me. Yeah, I think it is. That's the point we're at now. It's looking good. But yeah, what's in store for Lisa Stansfield in 2014 then? God, more of this, I hope. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, more touring, more promotion, and just working this album, and hopefully it will last the whole year, and and we'll and we'll um, we'll crack it. And the new project that you sort of just alluded to is that, has that got a working title for any of that? What the, the next the new, one? <laughs> the next one, I know. But no, too well far maybe ahead. we'll just call it eight. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But well, thanks a lot for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. But if you had to pick three tracks, of your own tracks, uh, would sum you up as a, as a, as a as an artist, as it were. What three would you pick? Oh, whatever. Mm. Um, oh my God, there's a lot of tracks. Um, I really don't know. I mean, I've got to say all around the world because that's the, the track that yeah, yeah, that is like. If you say my name, then everyone thinks of that track, and I and I have to love it because it comes from me. Yeah, yeah, that way. It's, it's like song. it's like kicking your own baby, isn't it? If you don't like it, <laughs> <laughs> been around the world and I want to kick my baby. <laughs> Doesn't have the same ring to it, really, does that? Yeah, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> um, and what else? I suppose. Um, I suppose from the new album, I suppose Love Can, um, because it because it's sort of classic mm. what I do. Um, there's a, there's a lot more diverse stuff on there, but it's still me. But but Love Can is like that. Um, what else? Um, I suppose Big Thing because Big Thing was was m loads of people may not know what song Big Thing is, but it was a B-side, which doesn't exist anymore either. <laughs> God, I sound like a granny. <laughs> Give me glasses. Um, no, Big Thing was the first real thing that, that pinpointed us, like me and Ian and Andy, when we were a band. Yeah, yeah. Um, it pinpointed us to work to the direction that we needed to go in because we'd made a very very pop album and um and we suddenly were selling like loads and loads of this single and it were, and it wasn't really that great you know <laughs> and we were thinking why is it sold so much i mean it's like it turned out to be a, like a massive underground club hit in london and I think yeah, we yeah, sold yeah. like a hundred thousand copies in about a week or something. Which was ridiculous. It, I mean, if you did that now, you'd have like a number one oh, album or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, that that was probably the first pinpointing thing that we, that we ever did. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, it's 
Pleasure speaking to you. Anything else you'd like to say to music news uh, watchers? Have a lovely Christmas. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers, eh? Cheers. Thanks. <laughs>